Hello, I'm Lux, and I like that old lady. She was cool. <laughs> and I remember. And, um, yeah? I mean, come on, they put her in the title sequence. I should say she is cool, because she's still cool as an old lady. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 6, Episodes 7 and 8. Bummer about her eyes. Yeah. Also, I want to know what that lady's semblance was. 60 seconds of oh my god you're going to die is what her semblance is. Like what, what exactly does it do? Does it like temporarily give her invincibility? Is that is that what it does? Not quite invincibility, but definitely a power up. Okay, I was going to say it's like the star in Mario, but that's invincibility except for falling. The star does not save you from a falling death. You knew. Like the outfit. Fun pun name. The Grim Reaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that works. Because, you know, they're called Grim. Also, we, we now know where the size designs came from. <laughs> yeah. We know that Crow based his off of the Grim Reapers, and Ruby probably based hers off of Crow's. With her own little twists and modifications. Also, I, I like that staff slash scythe crazy the whole yeah i was actually wondering if like that was her semblance like pura style to be able to call the metal back that just seems to be built into her weapon because her semblance is another pun because she called it like pre-reaction or pre-action reflexes <laughs> yeah or pre-flexes or something like that. She was making a pun off of, like, she can slightly see a head with her reflexes. So yeah, basically, she has spider sense. Basically. Uh, also, she shrank. <laughs> I always find that funny in, like, animes when, when they show the young version, tall, and they show the real old version, really short. I don't think people shrink that much. I know you shrink as you get older because of spine compression, but... Wow! <laughs> She got tiny. Oh, like, seriously? That's a little over the top there. And I like that whole thing going on with that lady, the captain or general or whatever, that, and Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Mm -hmm. God, I hate those two. Yeah. And based on their behavior, I was expecting her name to be more Alice related. But looking at her coloring, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if... Something in her name relates to the White Queen from Alice. Hmm. Something to look up, if I get the chance. <laughs> I mean, I only recently looked up the Shira writing. Do -do -do. It should be in the description of the last Shira video, so... It's a PDF. Have fun. Yeah, looking up things. I'll, I'll fit that in between editing, editing, and recording. And drawing. Yeah, drawing, yes, of course, drawing. And then there's people who throw money at me for art. Commissions. Links in the description. It also takes up my time. Haven't done that lately because I've been like, I, I, I need some time to do stuff, man. Poor Oscar. Also, poor John. I know exactly why he reacted like that. Because that's like a double stab in the back with the whole Pura thing. And he's been feeling that hard. Oh, yeah. Especially with last season, I think it was last season, where he was practicing based on a video of her he had on his phone that she sent him. Not to mention that they incorporated the metal from her weapons into his weapons. Just oof. I, I think that's why Jean reacted like that. It, it's just the whole, oh, she died helping a cause. Stab. Not so much in his point of view. Because in my opinion, Oz is going a about it wrong, but it's still a cause. You can still complete this task. But everyone's busy being focused on the fact that you can't kill Salem. You don't have to kill someone in order to win. No. That's another thing in this episode or episodes that got pointed out. Ruby's too focused on must destroy, must destroy. How do I destroy things with this power? And the lady kept going, no, you're thinking about it wrong. You focus on protection, protecting life. That's what you need 
to focus on to use this power. And Ruby's like, but that can't possibly be right. Yeah, except it is because look at what happened the two times that you triggered your power yourself. So, like, this is like a line of thought that they're trying to lead the characters down. Here's the thing, you don't need to kill someone to destroy them either. It really depends on what definition of destroyed and what you're destroying actually is. Because you don't have to destroy their living to destroy their life. Because, you know, you can, like, harm what they wanted to do with their life. Or stop the cause they're trying to do. Or do something else that will destroy them. They may still be alive, but they don't want to be. Or you could, oh, I don't know redeem her because that was kind of pointed out in the flashback the only way she can die is if she's redeemed it's like right there you saw it you guys all saw it because okay that theoretically is something osben didn't know but thanks to the flashback now everyone knows including osben you, like, need to think outside of the box of destruction you're trapped in because you can't kill darkness with darkness. You have to balance darkness with light. So you have to think about... It's kind of like how Yang... Kind of like how Aang... <laughs> my turn. Kind of like how Aang was struggling with... I, I, My beliefs say I can't kill the Fire Lord. But everyone's telling me to kill the Fire Lord. There's got to be a different way. Aang found that. We know what it will be for Ruby and them. So I haven't been in this training with the whole Silver Eyes thing. It'll help Ruby suddenly go, oh. But first they have to find Oscar, which is going to be interesting because some of the group is going to go, why are we even chasing him? Well, for one thing, if you decide you ever want Oz back, Oscar's your only chance. Two, without Osben, Oscar's just a farm boy. You gonna leave that poor boy out there? In a major city? Which kind of reminds me of San Francisco. I don't know why. And that reminds me of John's awesome sister. Yes. She's cool. Very cool. They did a really good job of writing siblings. Because they totally act like siblings. And yes, Ruby and Yang are also siblings, but they don't act... As siblings quite in the same way. Because there's a difference between girl-girl siblings and girl-boy siblings. And it sounds like they both had a very close relationship with each other before they left the family. Which also reminds me, that's a very cute picture of Jean surrounded by his sisters. Oh my god, his expression. So we see why Jean wanted to leave. Yeah, he's like, he's right in the center, has this kind of... Mm. What's really interesting, I think he was already wearing a similar outfit to the outfit we see him in at the beginning of the series. So he had this like, cute little version of it. I also like how totally normal, nothing different. Here's my wife. <laughs> nothing big, not like, I'm gay. Look at me, I'm gay. No, it's like, hey, this is a normal situation. My wife's home. It's cool. Yeah, I was like, hi. Also, like, is it just me or... Is that kid, like, definitely theirs? Like, not adopted or anything, but, like, it's theirs. Yeah, genetically. It's like, okay, we know Atlas Tech can do a lot of stuff. Were they able to create an embryo from two eggs instead of an egg and a sperm? Because the child really looks like genetically it belongs to both of them. Though, it may, this question may have already been answered on some fan forums, some with one of the creators, kind of like how one of the creators posted how the apathy actually came to be in the story and everything like that, and what the concept of them was. So I wonder if something like that happened with these two. Like, someone asked about it, and the creators replied. Because they handled it so well. The characters come out, normal, normal, normal. Wife comes home, normal, normal, normal. Wife has to get up. Ugh. I'm, like, I'm being blamed for this. Again, it's not my fault. I just maintain the civilian tower. Though that jumps me back to the, like, the writing up, going over the story, what she knows, who she was. And I like how my phone's ringing. It's Sean! <laughs> and I love how he's still in her scroll as Vomit Boy. 
that was a nice thing that you caught. I just saw the picture of John. John. Yeah. I was like, vomit boy. Really, Ruby? Well, that's what he what she first thought and mm-hmm. a pet name. I wonder if he knows. Considering that hug, probably not. <laughs> that was another nice scene. That was a very good scene. And also I love how when they were all there like got in range of the city. <laughs> they're all Oh, that way. Though, even though we got more details on how the power works, going back to the Silver Eyes, we haven't really gotten any backstory yet. Because apparently that's really hard to find. Because it looks like Salem has been hunting down the Silver Eyed people every time they've popped up. And I'm not quite sure why. Like, what kind of advantage does it give you? I know they kind of, like, wipe out Grimm and have a high plus against them. But why? Like, is it because it's very closely connected to the light god? Is that the thing? Is that the reason? It could be part of that. And also, thank you, Flashback, for pointing out that part from Jin's story, in case we all missed it. Yeah, I didn't actually connect it to the Silver Eyes power. I just saw it as the light brother going... So now the question is, since the power seems to come from the light god, when was this power granted? Was it something when they first created humans? Or was this something later after the world was remnant? Or did it just kind of randomly spark up accident over design? And going back to Salem, Salem we know utilizes Grimm. So people who can destroy Grimm easily not good for her. Also, the silver eyes basically are like magic level, and there's very few true magic users in the world. So getting rid of the magic users that you can't control, because the maidens, she has the possibility of controlling, and the magic can be used for good or ill. But the Silver-Eyed power is basically only good against Grimm. So it's very powerful, but it's a one-trick pony, and you can't turn it to your advantage. So do you really want the people to have the hope of these powerful warriors who can turn Grimm to stone with a single glance? No, you don't want the people to have hope. Yeah, though my brain just went, you know, since she's, like, been infused with, like, the dark pool that the Grimm come out of, would this power now work? On Salem in some way? It might because it worked on Cinder. So they could actually be a threat to her. And since she can't die, it just really hurts. Also, I still get this. This is going on to another set of people that are walking around Cinder and Neapolitan. I don't know why, but I have this feeling that Neo is going to betray Cinder at some point. Oh, of course she is. Also, that whole melting the knife thing was kind of cool but like why why did you shake the same hand she just did that (laughs) yeah like you are like really trusting right now neo and it's not a good thing around this particular person i know she has a deal for you and everything but be cautious girl yeah i mean especially considering you were willing to kill her not that long ago also interesting that cinder's saying that salem told her not to go after ruby did she Want Ruby not gone after because Cinder is getting obsessed? Or is there some reason that Salem would want to allow a silver-eyed person to live? Because we're all just assuming that Salem has been having them killed. Mm, Yeah, we've never actually, even in the flashback, we didn't see who exactly was controlling this group of, I'm going to just say bandits for convenience sake. Yeah, they just said, my boss. And... Yes, one of Salem's generals said, oh, we've dealt with the Silver-Eyed people before. That doesn't mean that they went around actively killing them. It doesn't even mean they killed them. It just means they've dealt with them. Which means they could have negotiated or gently pushed them off in a different direction. Mm Mm-hmm. So, let's see. Yeah, that kind of brings up that question, like, is it Salem? Hmm. Maybe not. Because there are other powers in this world. Here's the thing. We just think Salem's the bad guy because of how the story is currently directing us. Yes, 
her plans currently right now seem to be bad? But is it really? Is it just our perspective that makes it look like what she's doing is evil? Well, she sent her people to kill the Fall Maiden, so... Yeah, but it may just be means to an end. I'm not saying her actions aren't evil, but maybe her end goal... Isn't entirely evil. Could be. It's kind of like those wonderful games where you're playing along going, I'm the good guy! And at the halfway point, suddenly something happens, you're like, I've been the bad guy the entire time. Those are always fun. Yeah, it gets kind of depressing. Kind of like when there's no way in the game to avoid dying. Mm-hmm. Any particular points you want to go over? Well, there's a lot going on here because we finally got the two teams reunited. And the remains of Juniper, you know, JNR, I don't know how you'd pronounce that, Junior, <laughs> uh, have been in Argus for a bit. You know, and they've kind of been spinning their wheels. I was like, okay, so how are we going to get past the border? Because Wise isn't going to go by herself. And there's another thing that popped up is like the way she, the way that General, for lack of a better term, what she actually is in the series, I can't remember, but the way she frees, like, made up, uh, finally got her senses in order. So apparently her father sent out something, some feelers into the military. And I'm going to put quotations around father at this point. Uh, so just the way she frees, I'm like, hmm, I wouldn't trust her with wise alone. No, and also who knows what her father said in terms of what actually happened to cover up what actually happened. I still can't wait for her father and her, I'm just going to say stepfather and stepbrother at this point, because I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Meet Ruby, as in the team. I mentioned this before. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Especially like particular members like Yang. Ruby too, but Ruby's going to be like weird about it. <laughs> Just so much energy. Yang's going to be the whole threatening, maybe cracking knuckles, or I got this nice arm. <laughs> yeah, Atlas Tech is really great. Like, also, she's a faunist. You know they're dangerous. Remembering back to the beginning of the series, yeah, he doesn't like faunists either, so having one in his house will probably drive him absolutely nuts. Assuming they get as far as the Schnee Mansion, because that's not their goal. Their goal is the Academy. Going to be interesting. Though where precisely is Ironwood at this moment? Because we could get through a lot of red tape if we could just get Ironwood on scroll. Seriously, why has no one tried to get Ironwood on scroll? I don't know if you could actually get him on scroll at this point, because they may only have access to the, civil to the civilian tower and not the military tower which is how you'd probably get him, because the civilian tower probably only covers that area and doesn't cover much outside of it. The military one, on the other hand, probably covers much further or has a direct line of sight radio um, over their connection to another military tower. And just randomly, yeah, Crow is really fitting into the whole... Images of him from the title sequence. He is falling hard. To quote a country song, put the bottle to his head and pulled the trigger. Poor crow. For not picking up his... I'm worried about him now, too. Not in the fact that he's passed out an alley kind of thing. I'm thinking, like, maybe he was snatched kind of worried. I don't think he's snatched. I think he's passed out drunk at a bar. Which is really going to hurt their impression that they're giving at the Ark household. You know, because he was trying to talk up the kids and be this responsible adult and everything's normal. Especially since that apparently is the story Jean spun to his sister. Like, isn't that kind of dangerous for a professor like you to be taking kids out like this? It's an extended training mission. Yeah, think of it like an extended training mission. So, did you pick up any more lyrics from the intro? Because at this point, I think we're going to have to look them up. Something about this season's song. It just will not stick with me. I mean, I can hear the melody of it just fine and get like a word or two, a phrase, but not enough to piece it all together. Yeah, some of the lyrics I can't really hear. Like my brain can't 
pick up on the words that are being said. It can hear the, like you said, the melody of the words, but I can't pick up on what the words are. So yeah, wiki diving time. And one theory shattered for who the person in the shadows was for the title sequence because my first glimpse of the still image of the Grim Reaper umpteen weeks ago, I went, oh, maybe that's the person in the shadows. And then I realized, no, that looks like the old woman. So it's either the old woman in a flashback or it's her daughter. Mm. And my current theory is the person in the shadows is, is actually Cinder at this point. And what's really interesting is about that particular scene if you look closely at the background of that dark scene, it looks like the house Jean is currently staying in. Which, if they're stuck spinning their wheels in Argus, makes sense if Cinder and Neo get to them that quickly. Because apparently they're on the way now. It's kind of interesting how also Cinder took her back to that particular location. Well, it wasn't that far away from where she was. And I think with Neo, show don't tell... Quite. Especially the whole, like, we needed to talk about, oh, yeah, um, sorry. So by showing Neo everything and telling her presumably everything, because thankfully the authors didn't decide we needed to hear everything all over again. So Neo got updated and Juniper got updated without us having to sit through the story again. Poor John. Poor Oscar. Yeah. And I actually feel a little sorry for Ozpin. I'll feel more sorry for him if he, like, gets his butt out of moping. But currently, he, he is moping. Like, I can't do anything right anymore. I didn't do anything right ever. Oh, you guys don't need me. I'm going to lock myself in this room. Now, where is Oscar? That's the thing. Where is Oscar? That's the one we gotta worry about being snatched or passed out in an alley. Because without Oz helping him, he only has so much fighting ability. And come on, he looks he looks like an easy mark. Yeah, especially in a large city like that. Yeah. Even though it's bright and shiny, there's always a dark underbelly. Mm-hmm. Any more stuff you'd like to go over? Well, first, like, okay, finding Oscar, and then once... Find Oscar is like him and Ruby gonna sit down and have a talk with Ozben? Because if anybody's gonna bring Oz out, it's going to be those two. Because the only other way I see Oz coming out is if Oscar's in physical mortal danger and Ozben taking over self defense would protect him. Because he can't be that far gone. I mean, he'll let Oscar run off, but get beat up by a bunch of thugs. Probably, but if the said thugs try to kill him, not so much. It does make you wonder, it does make you wonder when Oz is going to come back out. Going to be interesting. Though I still have a feeling that we're not, we're either not going to see him until the end of this season or till next season. Oz. I have a feeling this is going to be mostly Oscar's portion of the story for this two-soul, two-person arc. Also, I love how they've left crumbs throughout the previous seasons for stories that you're just now getting full wind of like they mentioned the story of the two brothers they mentioned the story of the lady trapped in the tower they mentioned a man with two souls they mentioned mm -hmm. <laughs> all of the stuff they like said off the like off just off-handed like they sell the stuff off-handed and you're like oh <laughs> that's the best way to hide foreshadowing something the character says, just like as part of a sentence. Not they're not that they're pointing out anything. It's just part of a sentence. Like, oh, what are you reading? Oh, this really interesting book about a man who has two souls. Moving on. Because you don't even need a lot of detail of like, oh yeah, it's this. No, it's just it's this is the general summary of the story. If yeah. you're interested, I have another copy. Because it's a good way to ask a question. It's a good way to get an answer, and most people will just ignore it because it's just filler information to them. But good writers make something important look like filler information. So people will ignore it. But later they'll come back and go, Aha! Or there's those people who watched Gravity Falls and somehow found a message in a couple of frames that blew by. And found stuff that the creators 
thought, oh, it'll take them forever, or they'll never get this. Half hour after the episode's posted. Oh, bugger. <laughs> so yeah, there are just some people who like watch something, cough, Ember, cough, and just pick up on the tiniest thing and go, did you notice that? What? That over there. I bet you, based on that, this will happen. What? Oh, no, no, it won't. Oh my god, it is. So have you come up with any more theories based on the information we've gotten out of these episodes? That we haven't already gone over? Yeah. So all our previous talking in this episode about the how and why of Silver Eyes and who's killing them. I see Salem trying to recruit Ruby. Hmm. As he thinks about it and suddenly remembers the intro and... Ruby fighting off hands that resemble and probably exactly are the hands that Salem can control. Interesting. That could play into that. Also, the fact that I think Crow is going to get kidnapped at some point. Probably when he's passed out drunk. Yeah. And I'm guessing by Salem's people. Yeah, because that'll be the easiest time to take him because... There won't even be a struggle with the barkeep. They go, oh, yeah, we're friends of his. We'll take him home. Because I have a feeling that's what the symbolism is meaning in the intro. Along with the whole that he's falling down a deep, dark hole. Because those hands are also those Grimm hands that Salem can control. I think it also basically says it's not Salem herself that's going to kidnap him. It's her organization. I like that theory. It's going to be interesting, especially if, like, she can give good reason to Ruby to help even a little bit for a small period of time. It's going to be interesting. Well, it could always just be the hero's gambit. She has Crow and is willing to trade for Ruby. Hmm. It's like, so shall... Oh, wait, we can't travel into the future yet, so we can't watch the next episodes. <laughs> nope, but how about we wrap up this one? And this has been Our Thoughts on Ruby, Volume 6, Episodes 7 and 8. Oh, hey, you made it to the outro again. I'll try to vary it up a little bit more than usual. So, yeah, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, ring the bell, watch other videos. We have playlists, there's Ruby playlist. Almost everything we've done fits into a category of one of our playlists. Video games, Pokemon, Ruby, Sailor Moon, MLP, video games, Ember's Reading Room. Th that thing is a whole set of playlists in and of itself. Because, you know, there's such a variety in children's books. And let's see, more stuff. Uh, links to Lux's art, Lux's Tumblr, Lux's Commissions, Lux's Patreon, Lux's Coffee. Oh, you know something we haven't uh, brought up in a while? Zazzle. We have a few things up on the Zazzle store. Nothing Ruby themed, but uh, that's another way for you to get your hands on some of Lux's art. In a physical format, because he works primarily as a digital artist. Oh, and... Updates are a little spotty on my section of Tumblr. I'm having trouble putting some of my hacks into words. But if you haven't read it all yet, you can get caught up. It's still possible. It's, it's a young section of Tumblr. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.